Welcome to part two of the low profile vice build. In today's episode, I'm making the movable side of the vice. So the other side we made in the first part, we don't need that anymore. And the movable side is made of three components. The upper plate, the lower plate, and on the side, you see the washer. Now, to my own surprise, I decided to make the upper plate from steel. And the reason for that is mainly longevity. I was afraid that the tapered head would wear into the aluminum uh, prematurely and uh, just wear it out. But before we get started with this, there is an open item from last time. I still need to make the recess for the washer so that the plate can move flat, if you remember. And so I just chose a three millimeter end mill that I still had uh, chucked up in the CNC and I made a tool pass. It's just a pocket tool pass that you see here and the depth is 1.2 millimeters. Okay, onto the plate, that is the upper plate and the material for it is A36. So that is just a common mild steel hot rolled so you will see it has a scale on it and it is important that you make your first cut so that the tool removes that scale completely so don't scarf over the top of it or something like that that will just ruin an end mill in a hurry it is uh, important that you remove that right with the first pass also, I'd like to show you here that I am still working on the parameters for feed and speed. That did work out pretty well on the side. And here you can see that I'm almost too shallow in the cut, but it did work and um, I did not come out of the cut onto the top surface. Now here you will notice that um, the end mill starts to get unhappy. So the depth of cut is right on the limit, I think, where I like it. And you can hear the difference between a conventional cut and the climb cut. So the climb cut is much louder. Surface finish came out great, I think. Um, we'll see later on with the dimensions what they say, but that surface uh, I take any time. Okay, here I'm abusing um, center draw from my lace, but as long as you take the very tip of it, the angle will be right. You don't have to have a spot drill. Next, I'm going over to the drill press and I am machining the holes through. I don't really have a good way right now of opening those pockets. And I also want later on to machine the tapered section on the drill press. So I take it slow here. I use three different drills to just simply drill through the steel plate. And then I have a 90 degree taper um, countersink. And I use it to just get the countersink in for the tapered head screw. Next, we are back onto the machine. And that was the part where I was most concerned, it is the slot. So I have most of the material now removed and I'm starting to machine that slot and I take it very slow um, with a very shallow um, depth of cut. However, the surface finish on that came out just great. I totally loved it. It actually was a really easy part on the machining. The next step is to make the channel for the Mighty Bite. And this is again, just a pocket tool pass. And um, I like it because it just goes a little bit faster and it is a straight machining. So I can set the parameters here and can play with the parameters for the depth of cut and also for the feed rate. The chips starting to turn just straw colored. Again, back to abusing the center drill. This is for the 4.2 millimeter holes for the M5 thread that we need. 
back to the drill press and here is the 4.2 millimeter hole that I'm drilling and then I'm putting a chamfer, nice chamfer on the top of that just so that the thread has an easier start. And I will start that thread in the drill press and then go over to the vise and just finish it. Then. So the surface finish came out really nice. Um, the top surface is good. The side looks nice. And this of course was just done with the countersink. But if you have a look inside the slot, actually that looks really nice as well. The surface finish in here. The slot I was concerned of, of how that would come out. The channel here, the pocket for the Mighty Byte fits very tight. Matter of fact, I had to take a, a bit of a file and just remove the black oxide of the Mighty Byte for it to drop in all the way to the bottom. Yeah, so the part came out really, really good. I'm totally happy with this. Let's have a look here at the dimensions as well. Um, so I know this is something 0.5, 49.5. Well, well, there it is, 49.5. And then uh, I think this was 14. Yup, it's 14.0. That's, I'm, I'm very, very happy with that. And I think the overall length is 100. So let's see how that comes in. Oops, I can get it. 100, nope, can't get it. 100, 100, yep, there it is. 102, 101, 02, well, be hundreds over or something like that. So dimensionally, much, much better than what I had expected. So yeah, I like it. And I think I'm going to have another go at some steel parts. For the lower plate, I use 7075 aluminum. And you will see here that this is not quite like I normally machine because the depth of cut and also the step over is rather high. And normally I'm really conservative when I'm machining. This is 90% step over and it's a roughing bit. So I thought, let's make a roughing cut. On the outside, however, if you look closely, see that line right there? So that is one of the drawbacks of using a roughing tool. The surface finish is not quite as good um, on the side walls often. The floor finish on this tool actually is really excellent. Here is a 3D adaptive tool pass for uh, the roughing of the tapered section. So the tapered section here, of course it's necessary so that the movable plate will not move back when you tighten up the vise. Those chips I love by the way because they are short and you can easily vacuum them up. Next, I made the two holes for the M10 thread, 8.6 millimeters in diameter. Also note that I had a finishing pass at the very end. And here I'm making the two slots. That is the 3D adaptive pass. And then I finish up with uh, just a pocket tool pass to clean out the pocket nicely. The next tool is actually the one that I used on the steel machining because now I need to clean up the taper and I thought it would be good to use that steel tool or the steel end mill again because it has a radius. Um, the small radius will make or will leave a very nice surface on that taper because we need to climb up that surface. So we have a step over to the side and then the CNC needs to climb up, the z-axis climbs up that uh, tapered surface right there. And that worked out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that surface finish. Again, for the threading, a little bit deeper chamfer and then chamfer on the outside. Now, again, the next one was a bit more challenging because we have a tapered surface that needs to be chamfered as well. And it took me a little bit longer on how to figure that out in Fusion, but it, once you know it, it's not that difficult. And here also, not to run into the sidewall next to the step is important. And those are things you just want to check in your 
simulation. So that those threads are going to come out nice and straight. I start them in the drill press and then just finish them through using the vise. And that, that makes it nice, that process and simple. Next up is the three millimeter tool that you already saw me using in the beginning. Now here for the washer, I almost hit the stop because it wasn't glued on quite right. If you look closely, I've glued down a piece of aluminum and then I used not tape, but directly super glue. And the part I super glued onto that aluminum surface because it holds better. Here I'm using a one eighth inch tapered ball nose end mill and there's no roughing cut it is just um, a very sh small step over 0.2 millimeters so that a nice surface finish comes out now the trick to get these parts back off of the aluminum that are directly glued on is just using some heat um, you could use an iron soldering iron for that as well and the parts come right back off a um, couple of passes on sandpaper and they're going to look good now there's one thing left open. Have a close look here at the part rest itself, highlighted in yellow here with the arrow. They have not been machined in the same setting. Saying that I have machined one in one setting and the next one has, because of its stack tolerances sitting on another part, ultimately a different, different heights. So what I did is I went over to the aluminum part, picked up that dimension, minus 0.1 in Z, and then machine both surfaces one more time over. That will give me a precise parallel sitting of the part um, onto that part rest. I hope that makes sense. So for the final assembly, I am putting some lubrication on here, some grease. It's just white uh, lithium grease or yeah, something like that. It's white synthetic grease, basically. And um, here I want to show you something that you can easily do wrong. And I've done that many times. So I tighten up the lower plate, left about a quarter turn, tighten the top plate. So, and now watch, I tighten it and, and the Allen wrench even bends. Watch it close, right there. You can see it bend. So it should be tight, right? And what happens? Not tight. So always make sure that you do not bottom out the screw. The tapered head will just seat and it will bottom out and then you have hardly any force clamping it. Here you can see uh, we have two bite marks on one side and four on the other. So the right way of doing it is loosen the lower plate again. Then I already loosened the upper plate and I gave it more play between the head and the plate, so to speak. Mount the lower plate again and now make sure when you tighten it, that there's still room in the back of the screw and the back of the taper. And that will assure that all of the tightening force goes forward. Now that uh, I couldn't, couldn't pry that out, but hey, you bigger tool, bigger tool would do it. And uh, it took about 30 kilograms. So maybe 66 pounds or about a thousand Newtons. I did get it out. And here you can see it's quite some deep uh, bite marks in the part. And that's a saw cut as well. I like to mention that. So there's only three bite marks on the opposite side. So it could have been even higher force necessary to pry it out if all of the bites teeth would have been engaged. So yeah, I hope that you got something out of this video and that you enjoyed it. I enjoyed building it. And if you enjoyed it as well watching or want to make your own, why don't you leave me a like? Take care and I'll catch you next time.